Hi, I'm Anastasia, and welcome to my tutorial on programming a quantum computer using Google CERC, a quantum computing framework. In 2019, Google announced that they had reached Quantum Advantage. Quantum Advantage is the threshold where a quantum computer can actually outperform a classical computer. This is huge for the field of quantum computing. As of right now, CERC does not give you access to a real quantum computer that Google has, unless you're an early partner in the program. However, they said that early 2021, they will be accepting new partners into that program. But even though you may not have access to the machines now, you can still use the programming language and build algorithms and circuits and test them on the quantum simulator. And hopefully the public access comes soon. So everyone build really cool things with Cirque and tell Google about them so they can give us public access faster. Now let's get started. Now we're gonna build the Hello World circuit with Cirque. I'm gonna post links below of all the resources I talk about and you can head over to my blog or my GitHub to see the code that I've written here. Let's first go through how to actually get Cirque onto your computer. The setup is super easy. All you have to do is do pip install Cirque. Now, if you don't have pip installed, go here for information on how to install it. So let's talk a little bit about the Google hardware. Foxtail released in 2016, Bristlecone, which has 72 qubits and was released in 2017, and most recently Sycamore, released in 2018. The Sycamore 54 qubit device was the one used for the arguably most famous quantum computing paper so far, quantum supremacy using a programmable superconducting processor. It's designed with the qubits in a two-dimensional square grid, with each qubit connected to four other qubits, so it has nearest neighbor connectivity. By the way, as we get into this code, I personally am using Jupyter Notebooks instead of an IDE, but you can use any one you want and you're comfortable with. So let's look at the code. First, we import CERC, the framework. We can actually get more information about each chip by asking it to print circ.google.bristlecone or sycamore or any other chip that you want to see. Here you can see the topology of the chip and the connectedness. Why is this important? And with most chips, including this one, you see the qubits are not necessarily directly connected to one another. So if you ask for a two qubit gate, for example, a CNOT gate on qubits that are far apart from each other like these two, the transpiler adds swap gates that just swap the state of the qubits. That way, you get the qubit states that you need to apply the CNOT to close to each other. Now, since we're using a simulator, it doesn't really matter here, but this is a real life problem that quantum computing scientists have to think about when they're designing efficient algorithms. My hello world is a Hadamard gate, which puts a qubit into a superposition, and a CNOT gate, which entangles these two qubits. To me, this is a hello world because we use a couple of simple gates on a circuit. But these two gates are special ones that harness what makes quantum computing powerful, quantum superposition and quantum entanglement. First, we need to define the two qubits that we need to use for the circuit. We use a named qubit method on circ. Let's just name them A and B. Now let's talk a little bit about quantum gates. I'm not gonna talk about the full primer here, but if you're interested in that, I'll make a video soon. With classical computing, there's a set of commonly known gates, and, not, or, nand, xor, and fanout to perform any computation in classical computing. However, they are irreversible because information is lost. What does that mean it's irreversible or information lost? So for example, you do an OR gate and you get an output of one. We don't know in this case if the first bit was one, the second bit was one, maybe both of them were one. We've lost that information in this process. Fan out also requires the cloning of state, but the no cloning theorem says that we can't do this with quantum computing, so that gate doesn't work either. So since we can't use any of these gates in quantum computing, what can we do? Well, quantum computing has its own set of special gates. There's a set of common unary, one qubit, binary, operate on two qubits, and ternary gates, operate on three qubits that are common in quantum computing, besides the Hadamard and the CNOT that I just mentioned. Now don't worry about all these gates yet, I'll make a separate video on that, so subscribe if you want to see more. Then we create the circuit using circuit. Inside the circuit method, we put the gates that we want to add to the circuit and pass in which qubit we want the gate applied to. We use circ.h to first add a Hadamard gate, which puts qubit a in an equal superposition of the state one and zero, which means that upon being measured, the qubit has a 50% chance of being in state zero and a 50% chance of being in state one, plus or minus some noise in a real quantum system. Then we use a CNOT gate to entangle qubits a and b. This gate works by bit flipping the second qubit, so qubit b here, only if the first qubit is in the one state. So qubit a is the control qubit and qubit b is the target qubit. Then we use the measure method and pass in the two qubits that we want to measure. You can also, instead of defining the operations up front, build an empty circuit and use a circuit.append to add gates to the code. Now let's print the circuit and take a look. We see the Hadamard gate on qubit A and the CNOT gate on qubits A and B, with the control represented by the at and the x being the target qubit. Not to be confused by x, the bit flip gate. Then we see m on both qubit A and B, and those are the measurements. 
Circ also has a concept of moments, which is very clear that it's a moment in time. We can print the moment of a circuit and see what happened in these slices, or time moments. In the first moment, we have the Hadamard gate, and in the second, the CNOT gate. We cannot apply the CNOT gate at the same time as the Hadamard because a slice of time is taken. What if we added, for example, an X gate to qubit B after the Hadamard on qubit A, but before the line of code with the CNOT? The X gate would exist in the same moment as the Hadamard gate because that time slice is open. If you put it after the CNOT, moment 2 would become that X gate, and the measurement gates would be in moment 3. You can also print a representation of the circuit in moments like this using REPR and passing in the circuit. So now that we've actually built the circuit, how do we run it on the simulator? We get a simulator using circ.simulator. And then we pass the circuit to the simulator.run method. Here, you can also change the number and repetition per circuit. This is important for circuits that have noise, so you usually run circuits a lot of times to get the results. So we write result equals simulator.run, and we pass in the circuit, and let's do about 20 repetitions. And then let's print the results. So do the results match what we expect? Remember, the Hadamard gate puts the first qubit in equal superposition of 0 and 1. That means there's a 50% chance of the qubit being 0 upon measurement and a 50% chance of the qubit being 1 upon measurement. The initial state of our qubit B is in the 0 state. That means if qubit A is measured as 0, qubit B remains in the 0 state. This matches with our result. So what would happen if we wanted to add an X gate? The X gate is a bit flip operator, which means it's a pi rotation around the X axis on the block sphere. So it flips state 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. So now qubit B is in the 1 state initially. What would be the results? Now the results on each qubit should be opposite of each other. If qubit A collapses into the 0 state, the CNOT gate does nothing. So qubit B stays in the 1 state that we put it in with the X gate. However, if qubit A collapses into the 1 state, the CNOT gate activates and a bit flips qubit B from the initial 1 state to the 0 state. And we see that in our results. So congratulations, you've now coded your first quantum circuit using Google CERT. And you harness the power of quantum entanglement and quantum superposition. Isn't that so cool? Now try implementing quantum superdense coding. That's a good next small project that you can do, not much more information that you need from what we learned above. What quantum superdense coding can do is send two bits of data using just one qubit. And what else can you do with a quantum computer? First, replicate quantum computing papers on your own. There's a paper that I recommend to some people to start out with called Option Pricing with Quantum Computers, where you can practice your quantum computing skills. You can also try coding a variational quantum eigensolver. I have a video coming soon with quantum computing project ideas, so subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when that video is up. You can also contribute to Circuit itself as a project because it's an open source piece of software. You can add new classical and quantum features, so check out their GitHub. One place I'd recommend starting if you're totally new to quantum computing is the kind and documentation labels. As you're going through the circuit documentation or tutorials, maybe you find some broken links or incomplete documentation. Contribute and fix those issues. A lot of repositories also have labels like difficulty, low, or easy, or something like that, like good first issue. Another really cool thing that you can do is play around with TensorFlow Quantum. Quantum machine learning is a field with many aspects. Quantum machine learning can refer to doing quantum algorithms on classical data, classical algorithms on quantum data, or even using quantum computing to inspire new algorithms for classical machine learning. You can check out the TensorFlow website, tensorflow.org slash quantum. And you can use this with no install because you can run the TensorFlow quantum tutorials directly in your browser using Google Colab. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you've coded your first quantum circuit and are super excited to learn more. Let me know what kind of tutorials you're interested in. And if you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button and like this video. I'd really appreciate that.